Hey, Will. Yes? It's Friday. It is, Ross. You know what that means. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is I a 15-minute Friday. Folks, welcome to the show. On this episode, of course, you know how these go. Myself and a returning guest, we sit down one more time, but this time we're talking about a specific topic or subject with the goal and the hope of sending you into your weekend or your upcoming week with some positive, actionable, or thought-provoking advice and opinion. Turn up. William Fairbanks yes. back on the show on this lovely, lovely Friday. It is a Friday. Sitting here with me and recording Facts. and ready to talk about more stuff. Thanks for doing this again, friend. No, thank you for having me. It's Friday. I'm free. You know what it means. Fresh. I do know what it means. <laughs> also know what it means on Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, and Sunday. Yes. You know what every day means. Exactly. And I, you've unlocked it. So hear that, folks? He, I mean, Will knows what it means. So I don't know. Not a lot of people have unlocked it, but I have. You know what? Let's, uh, let's talk it's about blessing. unlocking something else. Yeah. You want to talk about maybe unlocking a little bit of self-branding? Okay. Unlocking a it. purpose behind a brand? Because mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's this week's topic. Okay. We're digging into the idea of building a self-brand in general, mm-hmm. the importance of a self-brand in the world and the environment that everybody creates in nowadays. Mm-hmm. But more importantly than that, more importantly than just branding everything and doing all that sort of stuff for promotional reasons, it's why are you doing it? Facts. It's the why, it's the purpose, it's the intention. Facts. So the clock is running. I will start us off with this one because Please. Um, it's maybe obvious that I have the conversation with people pretty often yes. where they're like, why do you do so many things? And then more so... Why are they all branded differently? Wait, let me ask you the question. Okay, ask, yes. let's, let's tee it up. Here we are again, William Fairbanks on a 15-minute Friday, and I'm here with Ross. Mm-hmm. So today we're going to ask him, because we all know he has so many brands. He does so many things. First, why do you have so many brands, and what is the purpose of having so many things going on? Because you do them all so well. You know what, Mr. Fairbanks? Take it that away. Is, that is a wonderful question. Take it away. And I happen to have an answer for you. Go for it. So for me, obviously, it comes from like, one, at my core, and you've talked about this a lot, I have just an addiction to making things. Yes. I have an addiction to trying things, yes. right? So I know that that's very specific to me as an individual, right? Not everybody's going to be like, oh, well, I don't have that addiction, so right. I can't make 97 brands. Right. But where that sort of spawns from is like, I uncovered that like, that's my purpose. Mm. That's my intention that I want to lead with is it's not just, I want to create a brand so I can try and get paid so I can make money and become famous or Mm. whatever it is. It's, I see a reason to have all of these different outlets that fulfill me in different ways. Mm. So for me, it's all about self-fulfillment. Now, yes, does some of that fulfillment come from a monetary gain Mm. of like, oh, helping me build a career, helping me build a more solidified life that I can comfortably live because we obviously can't do it without money, unfortunately, right? All of that, yes, that feeds into all the same thing, but it's all being built off of me as the core piece. Mm. And that's always what I tell people whenever they're like, I don't understand why there's so many brands. Why do you brand things and blah, blah, blah? How could I do that and all that sort of stuff? I think it first begins with uncovering who you are. What's your why, as cliche as that is to say, right? What's your why? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to create a brand in general? Why do you want to self-brand in general? And why are these ideas coming to your head of maybe a couple different brands? Like, for me, it's like I I have two different podcasts now, right? One of them, What You Don't Hear, the show we're on right now, right? Because I I love either, in this case, of the 15 Minute Fridays, making quick, educational, inspiring pieces, Mm -hmm. hopefully, right? Or the long form episodes is all about people's stories, Mm -hmm. uncovering who they really are. And that comes down to me loving getting to know people on a deeper level, Mm -hmm. not just tell me how cool your business is. Right, right. It's tell me about you. Right. Right. Agreed. So I created that brand off of, okay, well, this is going to be about the sides of people's stories that we wouldn't otherwise get to Mm. hear. Okay. What you don't hear. We are talking about the things that you don't often hear. In the same way that there's another part of me that loves being super stupid and silly and making stuff up and all this sort of stuff. So, okay, I have this love for comedy and love for improv. Mm -hmm. Why would I deny myself not creating an improv comedy show if I have the capability, right? So I can do that. So I'm going to continue to open those doors. So now, yes, do I hope both shows blow up and become huge podcasts and all this sort of stuff? 
Of course. Right. That's That'd the byproduct cool. of putting the work in, right? That'd be cool. You'd like to see a result. Right. <laughs> right. That goes without saying. But it's more so, it's fulfilling me in different ways. Facts. And I would safely say, to even strip it down and make it so simple for someone, would it make any sense if I had a show called What You Don't Hear that for the last three years was centered around authentic, real-life conversations that sometimes sound like recorded therapy sessions, mm -hmm. right? Maybe we dig into some really deep, meaningful things. Right. Would it make sense for me to have that and then all of a sudden start making episodes where we're making up a conversation and playing improv games and making vulgar and silly jokes? Right. Well, that clearly wouldn't make sense. Right, right. It wouldn't make sense thing. to be under this exact same exactly. thing. So again, there's now a purpose for a separate brand. Exactly. In the same way, we'll take it into like the video directing realm. Mm -hmm. It's a big question that myself... Uh, and Josh Emmerich, you know, get a lot. Shout out Josh. Shout out Josh. Dr. Emmerich. Because we, you know, we work together a lot in the video realm. I, I wouldn't be doing it if I right. never met him, right? We, over the years, have branded different entities right. for different versions of video work. Right. Don't you guys have like three? Yes. Four? Yes. Three? Used, used to be four. So we had, so there was. I know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's almost like you work with us or something. Crazy. Right? So there's obviously, there's JCP, mm -hmm. which is his brand, which is where we started making music videos. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens when you're making a bunch of like metalcore music videos and rock videos and all this sort of stuff with crazy lighting and, and crazy stuff? Right. And then a business comes along that they're a bakery right. or an insurance agency and they say, can you do video for us? Right. Do you show them all the crazy metal music videos and say, yes, we can. Yes, we can. We'll actually do this for you. <laughs> because that's what they're going to think. Right. Now, even though it's obvious that, well, no, we wouldn't make that right. exact video for them. We do what they need to do. They don't understand that. Right. So, again, there's a purpose and a need to brand in different ways. So, it starts with JCP, his music video brand. Mm -hmm. And then it branches into a company called Preserve, which was focused on weddings. And then that branches into what is now Mylan, which is a commercial brand. So it's like, okay, you've got these set things, and each of them have an intention. It's not just branding for the sake of branding, right. just to be like, I want more Instagram pages to manage. No it's like, way. No, no, that's not it. It is focused on each thing has an intention. Each thing has maybe a slightly different mission statement. Even though I or Josh or whoever, you, you're the core piece that ties everything together, you're self-expressing in a slightly different way. Because Facts. the way that you would manage a music video client, while at the base level is similar across the right. board, what you're delivering, what you're doing, it's how different. you're creating is going to be different from a commercial client right. or a wedding client or a whatever else client, right? So for me, like that's... A long-winded answer, but that, that is oh, like the, great that's the detailed answer. Right. Like there is an intention for every brand that I've ever been a part of or actively create. There's an intention for it to exist Facts. because sometimes not every, it, sometimes it just doesn't make sense for multiple things to be under one umbrella. Now, I also think that that translates into something that I want you to kind of go with okay. is like when it comes down to building a self brand, right? Because you have done a tremendous job at building a self brand. Thank you, my friend. And obviously Torp is, is adjacent of that. It is an individual brand itself, yes. but it's still an extension of you, much Facts. like my things, right? But the importance of self branding mm -hmm. and not in the sense of like, I don't know, I don't want that to sound like, oh, you got to promote yourself. You got to be, because we've done a past episode on content creators right. and playing the social media game. This is, you know, it can be similar yeah, things. within that realm. But still, like, there's a reason to self-brand. There's, mm -hmm. there's a reason to self-identify as something to also get people to understand what you do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to throw it to you. Like, walk me through, like, I don't know, what's, what's the importance of a self-brand if you're trying to be creative or an entrepreneur? How have you navigated it? What have you learned in the process? Like, I'm just going to kind of open the floodgates and toss the floor to you. Ooh, that is a weighted question. Um, I think that... And great answer, by the way. It's hard to follow up after that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that, Ross. It's almost like I've rehearsed that right. in my head. It came out so well. get asked about it all the time. That's so I'm crazy. like, I got this unlocked. That's <laughs> crazy. Well, deli well delivered. Um, I think that your brand is everything. It's who you are. It's how you see life. It's your morals. It's your perspective, right? Um, 
I remember I heard it somewhere. I forget. It might have been a Western. But they were like, your name is everything. Right? Your name can make you or your name can break you. And the crazy thing is you make your name. For me, it's my calling card. Right? One of the biggest things, I see myself as an artur with everything that I do. It's a film term, but I think it's across the board. It, it's basically when you're the author of your film and you are, people can identify your works, right, amongst everyone else. And I think that's one of my biggest things is I want people, when they see my work, I want them to be like, oh, yeah, Will did that. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I'm very intentional about that. Right, because you have a lot of people, and this is no knock to anyone, who are filmmakers or who are creatives, and their work doesn't stick out as far as, yo, this is somebody. So a couple of people to think about to pe- to give people examples is like Spike Lee, Wes Anderson, Quentin Tarantino, Guy Ritchie, Martin Scorsese. These are my favorite directors, right? When you look at their work, you're like, oh, that's them, right? That's their brand. That is the way that I carry myself in everything that I do, right? I want people to remember me as somebody who loved, somebody that uplifted, somebody that was lighthearted, somebody that was kind, someone that was fresh, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Somebody that, you know, um, cared, right? And these are all things that make up my brand right ultimately at the center of it is jesus like that's my brand that's who i rep that's that's my brand at the end of the day right but the importance of that is that's what people remember you by and that's what people that's the esteem that people hold you in is who is this person right everything that i do i tell people all the time like when i edit like yeah i can come up with an edit in 30 minutes yes but usually I'm spending two hours to three hours on a 30-second edit, and I can't help it because that's just my brand. And I understand that when I put this out, people are going to associate it with my name. And where do I want my name to be placed? I don't want it in the middle. <laughs> like I don't want it at the bottom either. I want it at the top. So while I can go and get this bread, I'm getting goosebumps talking about this. I could go get this bread and just chill and be like, all right, whatever. No, I, I got to take my time on it. I've got to. I can't help it because at the end of the day, I know that it's me. And I know, and, I want, and I'm thinking to myself, what do I want you to think about me, right? Not even just about the work, right? I want my stuff to be undeniable. I want it to be on a level where people are like, yo, I don't like this, but he fresh. <laughs> like, <laughs> even if you don't, like, I want it to be undeniable. Like, you think about the brand that is Jordan or the brand that is Serena. Shout out to Serena. That's somebody that we can relate it to. She just retired. I'm inspired. Right? You think about that brand. You think about not just, and it makes me emotional, you don't just think about the fact that She won all these titles and she changed the game of tennis. You think about the work that she put in to get there. You think about the obstacles she went through. The brand that is Serena Williams is like, what? What? You are iconic. You are gravitating, right? And that's that's where I hold brand at. That's where I hold level of 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 craftsmanship focus discipline like it's not just what you put out yeah right it's yep. never that when you think about nike like nike's the check nike is just do it but the brand is everybody that they put on behind it they 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 do the best of the best yep. right and that's what i think about when i'm promoting my self brand and when i when i'm thinking about all the work that i'm doing like sometimes i have to hit people up and be like i apologize that it's taking me so long right and i feel bad you know it's so crazy i'm always critiquing myself and i'm always saying all right you could do better and i'm i'm always have the standard but it's wild because like i deliver it and it's like yo this is heat every time i'm like all right, like, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But it's like that mentality 
is what's going to elevate my personal brand. I don't know if that made sense. No, it, it does. And I'm glad that you brought up the point of branding doesn't always mean a logo. Yeah. It doesn't always mean a catchphrase. It rarely means that. It rarely means that. Because, like, that, that is another point that I wanted to make before we end up wrapping up here is, like, when, you know, this whole time we've been talking about branding, it's not like, what's your logo look like? How cool right. does your visual look like? No, 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 no. I think another word for brand, we could also have replaced this entire thing by saying culture. Mm. I think yep. brand and culture go hand in hand because like so much of what we've been talking about is like, yeah, the brand that I want to build for myself or anything or whatever, how I communicate with somebody, that's a culture. How do they experience you? Facts. Whether as a creative, as a human being who does anything, like there's kind of a brand to that. Facts. I would say, I don't know, somebody, this is a very silly example, but like I would say in a town somewhere, there's probably a dude who's been branded <laughs> the town asshole. Right. Because maybe he's always drunk, drunk and he's right? always angry. He's always whatever. He's been branded the town asshole. That doesn't mean that he's doing – he's not building that right. brand necessarily. Right. That's, just, that's the culture that he cultivates. That, that's the experience that he gives to people is, oh, man, this dude's unpleasant to be around, right. unfortunately, right? Right. So it's like brand, I think we could like substitute the word culture even in that when it comes to how you build that, the experience you give to people, how Facts. you communicate with people. And, yes, of course, the easy example is – a visual identity, a mm -hmm. visual brand, right? Another thing to kind of like wrap all this up is like, I think self-brand is self-expression. That's it. It's not just what, you know, it's not me just being like, hey, I stole the color yellow and I like it to be associated with mm -hmm. me. Is that branding? Absolutely it is, right? That's branding. It, but it's, it doesn't go there because somebody could, it, just like you said this earlier, like somebody could sit and be like, oh yeah, Ross, that dude uses the color yellow all the time. Mm -hmm. But they could also follow that up with, with, but man, he's an asshole. Right. Man, he's not fun to talk to. Man, he is rude. Whatever it is. Right. That is more of the brand. They right. can identify visually the brand. Right. But they but remember. The culture, what they're really remembering, yep. what, you be, what, what you could be branded as is – Oh, you're hard to work with, you're difficult, you're a mean person, whatever it may be, right. right? Whatever label that somebody can associate with that. But like, I think that's the thing at the end of the day is understanding that building a self brand is building the culture that surrounds you. It doesn't stop Facts. or even start necessarily with the visuals. Facts. It's what do you want someone to experience when they ingest this thing? Just like my example earlier, when someone listens to what you don't hear, I want them to get an experience authentic, real, raw conversations right. in people's life stories. When someone listens to Whose Life, the improv show, I want them to experience fun. Right. I want them to experience humor. Right. I want them to be like, oh my God, this is the most ridiculous thing I've heard all day. This is right. hilarious. Those two things create a different experience right. and a different culture, right. therefore need to be branded differently. Facts. And so, yeah, I, I just think that like, I, I think self-brand is just a form of self-expression. Mm -hmm. And so it goes back to uncovering when you're trying to brand anything, whether it's a company like you've done with, you've, you know, you're, you're William Fairbanks, but there's also tort pros. Right. So it's like those things are two entities and two brands, but they're brought back to the same core piece, which is Facts. obviously you. Facts. Again, because it's self-expression and you're expressing yourself in those different ways. Agreed. And the thing is, I tell people all the time, cause I get the question, like, what is torp? Mm -hmm. Like, what is this? And I'm like, it's a lifestyle. Like it's me presenting my lifestyle to other people because people aren't going to walk around with a Will Fairbanks on a shirt or a WF on a shirt. Like, no, but they'll rock a torp because they associate it with dope. They associate it with creativity. They associate it with hard work. They associate it with the level. They associate it with standard, right? That's what a brand is. It's lifestyle. It's whoever created that brand it's them yep packaged up in a bottle and the thing is we create brands me personally i create brands for other people right so like torp is for me to help other people yeah it's for me to employ other people and to build something that's bigger than myself but at the same time holds my core values it, you're it, creating a culture exactly someone can experience back to it it's the culture of it all and that's what it is that's all a brand is you a wise man, Ross. <laughs> hey, you, you know what? You, you ever heard it? Listen, did you just hear yourself talk? <laughs> no, you. You said a bunch of cool stuff, and then you said, Ross, you're a wise man. You just said all the cool stuff. So, okay, before we make this 50-minute Friday a 30-minute Friday, right, facts. let's wrap it up. Um, 
final points that I'd love to leave somebody with. I want okay. both of us to share something. My biggest cool. thing that I want somebody to walk away from this episode with mm-hmm. is realizing that like, especially now, yes, in the day of social media, sure, having a brand and building it, all that sort of stuff, that's important. It's a whole other conversation, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's not really what we're talking about. Biggest thing that I want somebody to leave with is understanding that like branding first comes from purpose and intention. Excellent. Whether you're going to self-brand or you're going to build a brand, a company, whatever, you need to understand the purpose, the intention, the why behind why you Facts. want to do it. That's my last bit of advice. What would you want to tell them? Um, my last bit of advice is love what you do. And when you love what you do, it shows. Put love into your own purpose. Put love into your brand. And make sure it's authentic. You know what I'm saying? Because blind men see when things aren't real. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's it. I love love it. So there's some stuff that you love to do. We talked about it all throughout this episode. So while we say goodbye, where can people find the things that you love to do around the net? Yeah, we're back at it. You can check me out on all social handles, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Will underscore Fairbanks, spelled how it sounds. And then you can check out the brand Torp because we definitely touched on that as well. On Instagram, all the social platforms, at Tor Pros, that's T-O-R-P-R-O-S, or on the web, www.torp.life. That's it. Man, I wish I could tell people to follow me and be like, yeah, follow at Who's Ross Tyson. It's spelled how it sounds right. because that's not accurate. It is not. That is inaccurate. Tyson the does not sin? look like Tyson. The Eisen? The Eisen? The Eisen? T- it's not. Tyson. I don't understand. Yeah, <laughs> one, I day, one day. Maybe I need to rebrand my name. No, that's cool. My it's literal name. birth name. I need yeah. to- I'm actually rebranding my whole <laughs> life. And I, we're I'm starting on the birth certificate. My birth certificate. <laughs> you read it right here. That's how serious I am about this, guys. <laughs>